A section of Nigeria has called for the amendment of its 1999 constitution to give legal backing to state police. Now we're asking this morning, is this a solution to insecurity in the nation? Nigeria's federal government has recovered a total of 2.6 trillion naira in revenue from oil firms in the country. We'll have a guest join us this morning to provide some analysis on this. And we also have a new super review segment, we call it Off the Press, where we give you in-depth analysis of some headlines on the front pages of today's National Daily. So all these ahead on The Breakfast this morning. All right, we're back with The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Very good morning to you. My name is Kofi Bartels, we're reaching you live from Plus TV Africa Studios on Victoria Island in Lagos. And uh, it's a beautiful Thursday morning. Uh, we're grateful, grateful to be alive today at the 15th day of September 2021. We have interesting conversations lined up for you on the program this morning. My name is Kofi Bartels. You're welcome. We'll start off with a look at the, uh, the conversations that have been trending on, online. And of course, our first segment usually on the program is where we take these conversations and bring them on air to provide some information and uh, do a little bit of a discussion on them. Uh, writing solo today, so I'll do that myself. But uh, hey, let's get it started. We'll start off with um, the uh, presidential candidate of uh, the People's Democratic Party, a party that was uh, a ruling party in Nigeria for 16 years. It was uh, meant to be there for 60 years. If you remember, uh, the People's Democratic Party cared uh, some of its members. Let me not commit a fallacy here. They informed uh, the teeming public that uh, they will rule the country for 16 years. So maybe that uh, 60 years, 6 0. Maybe that was um, a prophecy too quick or too hasty. Well, history, you know, uh, you know has it was not kind to them, and then they couldn't feel, fulfill that sixteen, that sixty-year uh, mark. Rather, they uh, were on for sixteen years. I'm sure whoever had that word of, of prophecy from maybe the spiritual realm had sixteen, and it came to the press to say sixty. <laughs> but anyway, the presidential candidate. Uh, of uh, the People's Democratic Party. These days, Atiku Abubakar is a presidential candidate of the People's Democratic Party. Um, he's been here, there, and everywhere. You know, PDP, moved from PDP to APC, didn't work, went back to PDP, and uh, he's there. Um, he's been moving around the country, uh, seeking, to, you know, to uh, cement the party's base, encourage the party's base ahead of the 2023 uh, presidential elections, you know, and... Uh, uh, he's been trying his very best to rally the base of the party. Uh, his latest port of call is the southwestern part of Nigeria, part that is, uh, is you know, geopolitical southwest of Nigeria, let's call it that. You have uh, the states um, that are uh, in the southwest of Nigeria, those states that are um, traditionally Yoruba-speaking states. Uh, he landed in Lagos on Tuesday uh, after landing in Lagos, held a series of meetings. He spoke at a Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry uh, event. Of course, that event itself also uh, was a, another controversial one as uh, 15 of the other parties um, did not take it kindly uh, that Atiku Abubakar was invited for that event. We're told that Atiku Abubakar was meant to be there uh, on Tuesday. And then on Wednesday, Peter B was meant to be there as well. And then we were told that uh, while I'm in the late presidential candidate of uh, uh, Labour, uh, All Progressives Congress was, is meant to be there on October 28th. So the 15 uh, other parties uh, uh, saying that um, they're being sidelined by not being invited for this event. But, but the trending story, let's not miss that, is that Tiku has been in um, Ibadan, the Oyo State capital. He was there yesterday. Um, his visit is aimed at building confidence in the seeming supporters ahead of the flag off of the September 28, 2022 campaign date. Uh, this is a containing annex schedule of activities for this 2023 elections. Um, the, the governor of Oyo State, Shea Makinde, received him. You can see Shea Makinde in the picture. Now, Shea Makinde, interestingly, is one of Wiki's men. Uh -huh. I will put him out. He's one of Wiki's men. He's been frolicking around uh, Wiki, moving together. He was a Wiki in London when Wiki met Atiku, Wiki met Obi with Obasanjo. 
And um, you can see him there too. So I think it's a master stroke by Tiku because uh, <laughs> Mark Inde can't say he won't um, uh, host uh, or receive a Tiku. I mean, he is a leader of the PDP in Oyo State, you know, one of the leaders of the PDP in the Southwest. Uh, PDP doesn't have a governor in Lagos State. So, I mean, you look at Oyo State as the, uh, the only PDP state in the Southwest. So Mark Inde is, uh, <laughs> you know, de facto the, the PDP leader in the southwestern part of Nigeria. Mark Inde is the PDP leader in the southwestern part of Nigeria. You know, and so I'm sure that Atiku has this at the back of his mind. <laughs> he has it. Now, Mark, uh, Shea Mark Inde, governor of Oyo State, he made some statements, uh, he made some statements when Atiku, he hosted Atiku, uh, to his, a meeting of stakeholders of the People's Democratic Party in the southwest. He made some statements. Now, the first statement he made was that Atiku, he described Atiku as the incoming uh, uh, president of Nigeria in 2023, you know, by the grace of God, by the grace of God. He described Atiku as the incoming president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria 2023 by the grace of God. And then, uh, but made a point that uh, the chairman of the party, uh, Ishayu, must be asked to step down, must be asked to step down because uh, of perceived injustice in the party, to members of the party who are from, from southern Nigeria, of course, the uh, the issues in that party regarding uh, a zoning of the choice offices in the party are well uh, documented. With uh, Wiki and his uh, block in the party saying that they want uh, Iochia, sorry, are you uh, chairman of the party to go? Uh, they're asking why or questioning why the party should have its board of trustees chairman from the northern part of the country, uh, the party chairman from the northern part of the country and the presidential candidate from the northern part of the country that this means that those who are from southern nigeria have been sidelined now some feel that uh, wiki's um uh, outbursts or wiki's uh, uh demands are not unconnected to his losing the party's presidential ticket but wiki has said he's just interested in making sure the southern part of the country is not disenfranchised it's not cheated uh, that's what he's saying um are you said he won't step down Atiku has not said he will ask Ayu to step down, Ayu must step down. He doesn't even have the power to ask Ayu to step down. The National Working Committee of the party, uh, they had a meeting recently and they uh, gave a vote of confidence, a vote of confidence in the leadership of Ayu. Of course, they're the ones that can probably vote him out if he doesn't step down voluntarily. Now, what they did was that the, uh, the board of trustees of the party had a change. Uh, the gentleman who was the chairman of the board stepped aside and they handed over to another, a member of the board, a former uh, Senate President, Adolfo Zwabara, who is from the Nigeria Southeast, Nigeria's geopolitical Southeast. Uh, these are the Igbo speaking states. Um, so, I mean, this was perceived, it, it was thought it would be uh, a way of assuaging Wiki and his people, but Shehi Makinde is saying, still, Iyoche Ayu must go. Of course, I said she is the only PDP governor in Southwest. I forgot <laughs> the dancing senator who is now governor of um, Osho State. So yeah, there are two of them. But he is the oldest governor in the Southwest from PDP. So he's the leader of the party in the Southwest in terms of uh, offices. Okay. So um, Makinde has hosted Atiku. Atiku has probably used this as a photo op to show that, hey, I'm the presidential candidate of the party and uh, I'm here. You can see even the Fire Shea was there as well. Now, Fire Shea was in Port Harcourt uh, to commission a project. Of course, Wiki took the opportunity to, uh, to make some statements and sing a, a song or two uh, with his band. But uh, Fire Shea made some, said, said something important. I.O. Fire Shea is a former governor of AT State and the leader of the PDP in the Southwest. He said that Atiku was not the problem, that there are people surrounding Atiku who are lying to him and not giving him the clear picture and they are bent on you know causing trouble between him and other people in the party and he's uh, that's what he said but he's still weak his man you know so these are the dynamics in the party we'll keep monitoring to see what comes out of this but i think uh, this is a master stroke for um uh atiku abubakar seeing that um, he's been able to use this opportunity to show his legitimacy you know and uh, to show that he's the one you know it's a photo opportunity this man, Fire Sheikh, cannot say they won't attend the meeting. Uh, Mark Inde cannot say he won't, he won't attend the meeting. Will these men get tired of Wiki's antics and, uh, you know, say what? Let's just move forward. Article on the election 
is off, is okay, let's just, is enough? Or will they keep making their demands? We'll see hey, what happens moving forward. I'm sure if uh, Atiko visits the middle belt um, and he goes to Benway State, uh, uh, Samuel Tom is another wicked man, would have no choice than to host him. And uh, they'll take pictures together. <laughs> you know, if it goes to the southeast, of course, um, okay, Zeke Pazu, uh, as well as the others from the southeast, will have to be with uh, uh, Atiku, take pictures with him and host him. You know, so that's that. Let's move on. Uh, Samuel Otom, who I just mentioned, is the governor of Benue State. He's accusing the All Progressives Congress of taking Nigeria from the top to the bottom. In fact, he's not just accusing uh, the All Progressives Congress. He's also accusing President Muhammad Buhari uh, from taking, uh, he said, for keeping his promise, the APC and the president, for keeping their promise of relegating Nigeria to a bottom position. I'm sure he's, uh, in his mind, he has something like a picture of a league table, you know. Uh, if, for instance, Manchester United goes down to the bottom or Chelsea is at the bottom of the league, it won't be a good thing. So, um, <laughs> some Chelsea uh, fans are, are wondering whether this new coach they've appointed will be able to keep them on top or whether he will take them to the bottom. Um, I don't know if that will happen, but this is what Otom is saying, that Nigeria as a sort of Chelsea, for instance, uh, Buhari and APC have kept their promise of relegating Nigeria to a bottom position. Don't forget, um, two days ago, the president gave a speech when he uh, was hosted to a state, uh, to a meeting, uh, to an event rather, in Oweri, the Imo state capital, where he was on a presidential visit. What did the president say? He said that um, he, as president, has done extremely well. He, as president, has done extremely well. Uh, given the circumstances, the resources available to him as president, and the time he's had, and he compared his achievements to that of his predecessor, Jonathan, and the government and the state of affairs in Nigeria when he took over in 2015. And I'm, I'm sure Tom is um, you know, also reacting to a statement like that by saying that uh, Buhari and the APC, uh, they've kept their promise of relegating Nigeria from the uh, top to the bottom uh, position. Uh, all right. Uh, anyway, he said this through uh, his chief press secretary, Nathaniel Ikuru. Um, Autumn noted that the APC would lose the 2023 elections because the party had performed woefully since it took over power from the PDP. All right, so this is a, a member of the PDP using, you know, taking the opportunity to respond to uh, the, the president. And I think there's a, it's good to see the opposition party speaking, you know, and uh, saying something. I mean, the governor should also speak out and say stuff, uh, you know, so that we, we see the opposition active, you know, we see them active. But our term is interesting, uh, until maybe a couple of years ago, was a member of this APC. So what is he talking about? <laughs> he was also going to see President Buhari in Asurok Villa whenever he had issues in, in Benue State and was also defending the president and one of, uh, you know, people saying good things about the president and all that before he decamped uh, to, uh, to, the, um, to the PDP to save his political future ahead of elections, ahead of elections in Benway State. Um, so what is he talking about? If his political future was not at risk, you know, you have the likes of Banamas, Gemade and Co. in Benway State who were tussling for the APC in that state. If, uh, if Otom's political future was not at risk, um, he maybe would not have left the APC for the PDP. And if he had not left, would he have been saying these things? There's a question some would ask. Um, if the party has failed, then he was definitely part of that failure as a member of the party for at least uh, four years. <laughs> at least four years. But it's politics, you know. So uh, fair play to him. Fair play to him. All right, let's move to the next one now. Uh, this is another one that elicited comments, uh, you know, on social media. Um, well, it's not always received with, uh, with happiness and acceptance, uh, I, the idea of writing promotion e exams when it comes to uh, uh, members of the public service. We're all aware of what um, the electricity workers have been doing, you know, in a bid to avoid writing a certain promotion exam or having their members write a certain promotion exam. They turn the power in the country of, in the name of Strack, they literally just turned off the power. It wasn't the only issue, but it was one of the issues. And I think a major factor in their uh, industrial action is talking about the CONWA, uh, which is an electricity, electricity workers' union. Um, the day that that power was turned off, the last uh, strike they had, was the day the um, 
promotion exam for certain members uh, of that union who are under the uh, uh, Transmission Company of Nigeria, that was the same day they were meant to write the exams. Um, we have other <laughs> examples in history. We can look at what um, Adam Soshimole tried to do in Edo State, asking uh, uh, government teachers to write exams, aptitude tests, so he can determine who is who and know who is fit to teach. We can go to Kaduna State where uh, Malam Nasser el Rufai, governor of Kaduna State, uh, also tried to get his, uh, the teachers in public service to write exams. All of these were met with uh, stiff resistance. You wonder why. All right. So uh, when, of course, you hear that um, the Ministry of Interior, Ogbeni uh, Raouf, Arabe Shola, um, has ordered the Civil Defense, that's the Nigeria Security and Civil Defense Corps, at the Correctional Services, Fire Services and Immigration Service Board to conduct the next promotion exams for its officers in various states where they operate. You'll be going to wonder if uh, this will also be met with safe resistance or if this is something statutory that these organizations go through. But, um, well, this was contained in a statement signed by the Ministry's Deputy Director of Press, uh, Fonja uh, Jibala, on Tuesday. Um, uh, Arab Shalom gave the directive during an inspection, inspection visit to the examination center in Abuja stated that the overcrowded uh, examination centers can fault the integrity of an exam. So imagine <laughs> if you have such an exam and people are copying from themselves because the uh, hall is overcrowded. I think um, that's a good one coming from Abeshola. You don't need to have an overcrowded hall so that people can uh, write the exam without copying from each other. <laughs> I mean, and um, think of it, how many officers in our public service are promoted and uh, not on account of merit, but on account of how many years they've spent in service. And I think it's a good one that they be allowed to write promotion exams so that we know who is who. We know who is who. Uh, so we won't have any more God at the top moments. Yes, that's the truth. So we won't have any more God at the top moments. I mean, if <laughs> that's, that's, a, that's the gospel truth, you know. So uh, fair play to Arabe Shola. Um, will these people, will these groups, uh, these uh, agencies react? I don't think they can because they are also security agencies as well. And uh, uh, as a member of a security service, you... Uh, basically what Fela called a, a zombie. No, no offense intended to our uh, gallant officers of these uh, organizations, but basically you do what you are told is what I mean. Uh -huh. You do what you are told. So um, I, don't, I don't expect that there will be a backlash uh, and they will have to write these, uh, the exam and let's see what comes out of it. But you know, when it comes to writing exams by some of these agencies like the immigration, it's been a, a bitter experience. You remember the stampede that was uh, we experienced that at, um, at uh, Moshuda Biola Stadium. From, then it was called the National Stadium Abuja. Uh, that has not been sorted out till now. You know, remember Ab Abamoro, the then Minister of Interior, and how many people died there. That matter hasn't been really fully sorted till now. But um, we hope that we know this won't be the same. It won't be the same. They have their centers, the places where they'll go and write the exams. It's going to be uh, uh, a computer based test, CBT, which is a good one. Uh, as far as the Ministry of Interior is concerned, uh, it's also a good one for the boards or the board uh, concerned with this. I mean, the Ministry of Interior, of Interior has not had good press in recent time. Uh, under his watch, we have had several prison escapes, uh, including the um, infamous Kujay prison escape. Even though the minister has spared no effort in telling Nigerians that many more attempts have been made by prisoners to jailbreak, and these attempts were successfully. Um, uh, you know, uh, handled by the agencies. So, uh, you know, it's a mixed bag. But from what we see, a lot of the breaks have come from outside and it's not been a successful uh, repelling of that. But this is a good one for the ministry and we commend them. We'll see what happens at the end of the day. We wish all the, uh, uh, the, uh, 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 the officers who are writing these exams the best. I think that's as much uh, we can say on this really. All right, that's the top trending segment. On the Breakfast and Plus TV Africa, we'll be right back with more. Stay with us. <laughs>